Hey friend, welcome to my channel, Kareen Alude, where we talk about everything and I'm Kareen Alude. If you're not your part of the Friendship Circle, please be sure to like, subscribe, and join the Friendship Circle. If you're already part of the Friendship Circle, please be sure to turn on your notification bell so you can always know when I post a new upload. Now let's get into this video. I am so excited because today we are talking about Karen Parsons, aka Hillary Banks. Fresh Prince is beloved by black millennials, not only because of its influence on us, but also what it did for the culture. We connected with the family for six seasons. Whether by watching in real time or getting attached through reruns in later years, the fashion on the show played a big part in my personal love for it, particularly the perfected Bel Air style of the one Miss Hillary Banks the epitome of the word bougie, far before the word got gentrified. She literally was the first icon I saw on TV after coming from Haiti as an immigrant that I wanted to em emulate. She was so chic, witty, and feminine. Not having an older female presence around as a child led me to look towards other inspirational women on TV for a little guidance, and she was just one of those. I have a sentimental attachment to Hillary Banks, a nostalgic connection that will forever be ingrained into my head as her character played a pivotal part of my childhood. Parsons was made for this character and she has no idea how many little girls like me she inspired through her work. Hillary's transformation throughout the show was jaw-dropping. At the start of Fresh Prince, she's something of a shallow, sponging, mean girl, but by the finale, Hillary is an absolute feminist icon and she's inspiring. She learned to be kind and compassionate and gave some of the best big sister advice to Ashley that I took for myself. From becoming completely financially independent to understanding the true value of life, love, and having a fulfilling career, Hillary blooms into a character which every woman can take strength from. Her character arc is proof that there's always an opportunity to turn your life around, reevaluate your priorities, and become a better person. Today's video is an ode to Hillary Banks' style, persona, and impact. We also will briefly look into the life of the actress who was the only one who could fill those shoes, Corinne Parsons. Now, let's get into Parsons' life first, okay? Because I know we keep calling her Hillary, but I just cannot, you know those personalities that you just cannot dissect from the actual person because as a child, they just was that pivotal in your life. I just will always see her as Hillary Banks. <laughs> no matter what role she plays, she will always be Hillary Banks to me. And I know most actresses don't like that. They don't like to be stuck in this one character for the rest of their lives. But they have to understand the impact that they have on the people who grew up watching them and supporting them and how it's so hard to differentiate the characters. Comment below what characters, it doesn't have to be Hillary, but comment below what characters literally you cannot differentiate from the actress when you see them. Most people know the name Hillary Banks, but not the name of the actress behind the iconic character Corinne Parsons, who has a complete identity of her own. She loves music and traveling to Mexico. Her favorite color is blue and she loves chocolate cake. She also speaks French, German, and Spanish. She's a fairly private person, managing to avoid any controversy throughout the years. A class act that is skilled in elegantly and gracefully responding to nosy interview questions and maintaining an air of mystery. Parsons was born in Los Angeles, California on October 8, 1966, and in an interview for Essence in 2008, she describes her percentage as biracial. Her mother, Louise Parsons, is African American from Charleston, South Carolina, and her father, Kenneth B. Parsons, is British American of English and Welsh descent and from Boot, Montana. She attended Santa Monica High School. However, many did not know that Parsons' character was a far cry from her experiences in real life. The actress has revealed how she grew up as the only child in a biracial family. There was no dad, I need $300 moment in Parsons childhood. While Parsons technically grew up less than eight miles from Ritzy Bel Air, her modest 1970s and 80s upbringing was a far cry from that of the Banks children. Rather than being waited on by a live-in British butler, Parsons spent most of her youth moving to various little apartments around then hippie-ish Santa Monica with her mom, a deputy sheriff turned bra and swimsuit model turned librarian, while her father was mostly absent. She said, we were lower middle class, borderline. We weren't poor. I never went without food or anything like that, she says. But there was a period where my mom needed food stamps. 
In a 2017 chat with DJ Vlad, Parsons opened up about her childhood. She revealed her parents were married in 1963 when interracial marriages were not legal in some states. According to her, she grew up in Santa Monica, California, which was sort of a hippie era at that time. Hence, she did not experience anything overt coming her way. She had minor incidents when she was called funny names and she's been called the N-word before, but there was nothing huge at the time. However, as Parsons got older, she started becoming far more aware that she was biracial. Parsons said she had a close bond with her mom who taught her how to deal with such prejudices. She described her mom in glowing terms and said she was always in awe of her and proud to call her mom. The actress revealed she tried to emulate and follow the lead of her mother, who was graceful in all she did, rarely talked about race, and handled people as individuals and situations individually. Parsons' relationship with her mom differed from what she had with her dad. She revealed she was always trying to challenge her father because of his views and some of the things he used to say that she found offensive. Parsons explained her father would sometimes say things that did not sit right with her and would not even realize he was doing it. She said such things are easier to handle as an adult. However, being a biracial teenager with a white father who would say certain hurtful things made her go crazy. She further explained that her mother was used to her dad and handled him well. Eventually, she learned to follow her mom's lead with how she handled things gracefully. Parsons also discussed her parents' mixed experiences as a biracial couple. She said her mom and dad had different memories of how things went down. Her dad always maintained there were no issues, however, her mom revealed her dad was fired at work when it was discovered they were dating. Her mom remembers that their experiences as a biracial couple much more than her dad. Parsons starred as Hilary Banks on the sitcom The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, which aired on NBC from 1990 to 1996. She said, I suddenly had a sister, Tatiana Ali. I had a little brother, Alfonso Ribeiro, while Will was like a brother. Even the crew was like family. Everyone embraced each other and cared about each other. Even if it stopped right with the pilot, it would have still been a life-changing experience for me." End quote. Perhaps most crucially for Parsons was the arrival of a new father figure in the form of James Avery, the actor who played Uncle Phil. First off, rest in peace, Uncle Phil. He really was that father figure through the TV screen. I loved everything about Uncle Phil, okay? She said, he was so much like dad. He took that role very seriously on camera and off. My dad was not a typical dad and James was, she says. He was very affectionate and warm and always paid attention to who I was going out with. And if he saw them, he had to shake his finger in their face. He was great, end quote. Avery died in 2013 at age 68 from complications following open heart surgery. But in 1996, after six seasons and 148 episodes, NBC canceled Fresh Prince and the close-knit cast went their separate ways. It was devastating to suddenly be stripped away from them, says Parsons. Everybody else went home to their families when it was over and I pretty much went home to my two dogs and that was it. It took time for Parsons' new reality to set in. Virtually her entire adulthood had been spent cloaked in the comforting monotony of studio audiences' laughs and craft services' lunch. Now she found herself in a daze and it took a run-in with her former junior high friend, Lenny Kravitz, to shake her out of it. I bumped into him not not that long after Fresh Prince had been off and he was the first person who looked at me and said, but how are you really doing? Whether he meant it to laser in like that, it hit me, she says. It was the first time I really acknowledged that I wasn't doing that well. I was kind of tap dancing as fast as I could and not paying attention to the fact that it was a struggle. She co-created, co-produced, co-wrote, and co-starred on the Fox sitcom Lush Life in 1996, which was later canceled after four episodes. In 2001, she starred in the critically acclaimed but short-lived television series The Job with Dennis Larry. Besides television, Parsons has starred in several films, particularly in comedies such as Late Night, Major Pain, and The Ladies' Man. Parsons is the founder of the Sweet Blackberry Foundation, which produces animated films and books about unsung black heroes. The first video in the series was about Henry Box Brown, a slave who mailed himself to freedom. When I was pregnant with my daughter, that's when I started really thinking about what are they going to teach her in school and what am I supposed to teach her? How do I supplement her education as a parent, Parsons says. As I was talking a lot about black history and stories that you don't hear about, my husband was like, you need to do this, end quote. Parsons has also published three books for children, a middle grade novel, 
How High the Moon, which was loosely inspired by stories of her mother's childhood in the Jim Crow South. Years later, Sweet Blackberry has grown from a passion project into a thriving organization with a series of animated short films available on DVD and Netflix narrated by the likes of Alfred Woodard, Chris Rock, and Queen Latifah. Parsons also added children's novelists to her extensive resume. Parsons married the young and the restless actor Randy Brooks in 1987. They divorced in 1990. Parsons married director Alexander Rockwell in 2003. Together, they have a daughter, Lana, and a son, Nico. After Fresh Prince, in the years after Fresh Prince ended, Parsons' name recognition faded in a world still decades away from salivating over very morsels of 90s nostalgia. Not that I expected people to know who I was, but even when I tried to tell casting directors that I'd done what I'd done before, they would have no idea, she tells Vice. I started feeling really stupid trying to get them to know what Fresh Prince was and who I was on it. It was embarrassing. I'd feel like a moron, like, oh, it was this show in the 90s. My interests were changing, she says. It became very difficult to do everything, to memorize the lines for a part and have to get someone to last minute watch the kids, to race across town and do all that. And if you got a call back, do it again. I'd find myself dropping the ball a lot. Now let's go back to Hillary Banks real quick, okay? The evolution of her style. The evolution of her character, Hillary Banks, is iconic. She went from spoiled daddy's girl to successful woman of influence. Hillary got pretty lucky when she managed to score herself a job as a TV weather girl, but lucky or not, she still managed to work hard and progress within her career enough to get her own talk show by the sixth and final season. After a woman gave birth on her show, Hillary holds the baby in her arms and feels overjoyed deciding that she wants this for herself, though she eventually decides against the idea. The very concept that the once self-centered Hillary could foresee herself taking care of a child is a bit of a big stretch from the character we knew in the pilot. Let's face it, the only topic of advice that Hillary would have been an expert on in the early seasons of Fresh Prince would have been Prada or Armani. However, by the final season of the show, Hillary is capable of dishing out some truly empowering and incredibly useful advice to her younger sister Ashley about when the right time to have intercourse is. It's also possibly one of the first times the character made me tear up a little, so there's also that. Gone were the days of Hillary trying to go grocery shopping in her parents' fridge. Hillary got herself a career, got her own place, got her own life, and yes, even started to get her own groceries. She became totally independent and rightfully proud of it. Now let's get into her style. Hillary was always ridiculously stylish, but by the time she got her own talk show, she'd swap bold skin bearing dresses and truly enormous hats for sleek structured outfits which screamed business. Hillary was less about having fun all the time and was clearly all about her career by the end. Even before she was actually a career woman, her everyday outfits were polished enough for any boardroom. Ironically, when Hillary finally did land her first job as a weather reporter, she got hired on the spot because she looked the part. Everything she wore oozed confidence and strength, and she always stayed true to her ultra-polished, color-coordinated aesthetic. Many of the hallmarks of Hillary's personal style included strong tailored silhouettes, statement accessories, dramatic co color paired with more dramatic colors. Her accessory game was absolutely legendary, and she often chose playful, youthful pieces that balanced the statement-making elements of her style. Hats in particular were her true specialty. She loved decorating them with flowers, ribbons, and and other embellishments and often made a point to color coordinate her her beret with the rest of her outfit what makes hillary a style icon is less about what she wore and more about how she wore it endlessly confident she once famously describes herself as a beautiful woman wrapped in an even more beautiful woman's body her makeup was always natural and simple. She accentuated her natural beauty with light powder, gloss, and sometimes a bold red lip. Her hair remained styled in her curly coils and sometimes a mid-length straight bob, especially when she got a job. <laughs> her looks are timeless, just like a friend Dresher or Rachel Green, and she deserves the same recognition in flowers. Here's to my big sister in my head, Hillary Banks, a 90s icon who will always get her flowers with me. Thank you guys for tuning in. Please be sure to turn on your, your notifications 
and comment like and share this video and also comment below what other style icon on tv would you guys like me to do i did do one for friend dresher i do want to do one for rachel also because she was definitely a 90s style icon and regine hunter from living single <laughs> i got you guys but comment below what other style icons that you guys want me to do okay i love you guys so much thank you for tuning in until next time